Everybody says that black holes are a prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity. We're going to debate that. Hello, welcome to Real Physics. And today my guest is Wolfgang Kunt, professor at the Argelander Institute in Bonn for astrophysics. And well, we are talking about his claim, and it's a very strong and unusual claim. He says that black holes do not exist, at least he doubts the existence very much. So, but before you turn off the video, let me explain that Wolfgang Kunt is a distinguished professor of astrophysics. He has a long, outstanding career, starting in the 1950s and he has publications in nature and he held uh, professorships in i think on all continents in the world right so um yeah you should uh, take seriously his objections and we cannot cover all the details i will sometimes refer you to the literature but uh i hope we have a good conversation about the black holes and uh, and the arguments right just one point you made black holes don't exist was hawking's statement four years before his death okay so i okay. now agree with Stephen Hawking. <laughs> <laughs> actually you were uh, you collaborated even with him but we, 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 we're going we're going uh there too but let me first uh, start with uh, very simple terms uh the idea of a black hole that means the idea that something could not escape from a gravitating body is actually very, very old in physics. And it goes back, I think, to John Mitchell, who simply said that right, right after Newton's discovery, so to speak, who said that, well, you have a gravitational energy and you have an escape velocity, say from the Earth, it's 11 kilometers per second. And of course, if this escape velocity formally exceeds the speed of light, so seems that nothing can escape from a gravitating body. And since then, the idea that a very massive and very heavy object uh, can act as black bodies is, is around. Yeah, we could, we could say that. Um, but uh, apart from the term was co coined much later, the, the issue became much more important after Einstein's theory of uh, relativity and uh, a lot of research was done in the 1950s and 1960s and i think uh, we can start there i shall mention that um, doubting black holes does not mean that you do not understand general relativity you, you were a student of pascal jordan and you collaborated with jürgen ehlers and uh, others in hamburg and uh, I think that's a good point uh, to start the discussion because I suppose as a student you were also convinced of that possibility or at least you did not start out doubting, right? Right. I came from Jordan's group. We were doing exact solutions. We did mathematics. We calculated yeah. gravitational waves and mm -hmm. mathematics. We are not really physicists, we had to learn all this. Mm -hmm. um, and there were neutron stars, heavy neutron stars. Mm -hmm. I was already then just learning about neutron stars being discovered as pulsars, mm -hmm. actually a few years mm -hmm. later. The, um, the interest in, in black holes really sparked, I think, with the 1967 mm -hmm. discovery of pulsars by Joycelyn Bell, right? That was. I mean, maybe one can say the first uh, real possibility right. that one could detect. Such we were talking of the days which, after which the discovery, that? after Jocelyn's discovery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She saw them first in radio and later, uh, yeah. few years yeah. later, x rays. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're precise, so the, the discovery of, of pulsars, right? And then it was Tom Gold who gave the right interpretation. Right. And that's also. A, a, a side story, but very interesting. One of its very best publications. At the, first, at the first reaction was, no, this is nonsense, this is absolutely impossible, but it changed so 
quickly that uh, a year after you were not allowed to talk about pulsars without uh, talking about neutron star, the neutron star interpretation. So, well, I mean, neutron stars, it, it's also an interpretation, but I think it's a very reasonable one. I very think very it's good one. we have now hundreds it's of... Certain, certainly a very fascinating one, this huge atomic nuclei uh, spinning around in the cosmos. Um, yeah, um, but uh, so what did what this what did this change for you? Because I mean, earlier you have been a part of the mathematical physics uh, community with uh, Jürgen Ehlers and and, and um, Hawking, and, and and so you were theoretically prone to accept the the concept. And did that change your opinion, or did that for the first time? Um, spark the interest and say, okay, let's check that. Or I wrote these two survey articles for German readers mm -hmm. uh, in English, uh, which I would still sign today. I, I, everything I said, mm -hmm. I still think is correct. You don't I never, behold, I never <laughs> claimed we know one of them, mm -hmm. but we described their properties, mm -hmm. and if such existed, they would behave such and such. Mm -hmm. And this is eternal truth, I think. And with, in the back of our minds, neutron stars may eventually turn into them. And what we heard then was that neutron stars are just about as heavy as they can be. If we add a little bit of more mass, mm -hmm. pour on them, mm -hmm. well, the pressure will go up, but mm -hmm. pressure in relativity theory has weight, mm -hmm. unlike in Newtonian theory. Mm -hmm. So a new type of physics entered, mm -hmm. or thinking, mm -hmm. neutron stars, if you add mass, mm -hmm. the increasing pressure does not stabilize them, mm -hmm. they may collapse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that idea has really intrigued me for many, many years, only ten, more than 10 years later was it clear to me why we heard, because we forgot that neutron stars are almost points, 10 kilometers. Matter coming from thousands of kilometers apart, a white dwarf or somewhere. They are points in the space. Matter, as it falls down, gets to the speed of light. It won't hit this point, it will go around, it will recycle the neutron star, make it spin faster, mm -hmm. but not heavier. Mm -hmm. Bingo! <laughs> so if we had known this from the beginning, I would never have defended black holes. But as I didn't know this idea, mm -hmm. I collected all the arguments mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. published them in two German mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. articles, physical. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, neutron stars, uh, you, you're saying that they're not, not really distinguishable at, at the very end from, from these black hole candidates? You once you, once you, you published they a paper? They are distinguishable, yeah. but you cannot get black holes from them. Mm -hmm. You try hard and you pour matter and you get further neutron stars mm -hmm. with the accretion disk. Mm -hmm. You should not forget the accretion yeah, disk. Yeah. Neutron stars that accretion mm -hmm. disks, they are plenty and not only very few of them well mm -hmm. understood. Mm -hmm. Measurements mm -hmm. are difficult. Measurements take time. I think our Michael Kramer should do more of them. He has already done nice things about them. He should continue with that. Mm -hmm. Neutron stars have the accretion disks around them. They make all the cosmic waves. Mm -hmm. Even though people think they come from far, no, no, they come from nearby. Mm -hmm. Neutron stars. Mm -hmm. They make all so the fast radio bursts. Yeah. Neutron stars are very important objects of okay, which we hardly see because they're so small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that refers to your paper you said are there black holes among the black hole candidates, right? So you, you're dissecting a little bit this. So that aspect came years later, mm -hmm. when I profited from my young collaborator, Daniel Fischer, mm -hmm. who, who edited the Sky Week, a weekly journal, mm -hmm. reporting on all measurements. Mm -hmm. uh, with him, for two years or so, we were looking for black holes among the neutron stars, mm -hmm. black hole at least candidates. Mm -hmm. We looked at the 26 best candidates mm -hmm. and after two or three years of hard work we found none of them are reliable mm -hmm. 
and it is they may or may not mm -hmm. so but this still thinking that one of them might collapse mm -hmm. if we had known none will collapse we might not have been as active in those days we mm -hmm. might not mm -hmm. but our paper is a black hole among the black hole candidates mm -hmm. answered with we know none mm -hmm. that okay. was my paper with Daniel Fischer Mm -hmm. which I still like to look at today. Mm -hmm. We were really hard working for two years mm -hmm. and didn't find any. So this mm -hmm. by itself was, uh, would have been, mm -hmm. could have been an end. So there is data, but it is unconvincing in the sense that it does not prove the existence. We took all these data and mm -hmm. we found they can be much, e can be more easily interpreted in standard ways mm -hmm. as Neutron stars mm -hmm. surrounded mm -hmm. with accretion disks. Yeah, yeah. Massive accretion disks, mm -hmm. they can be mm -hmm. as massive as 20 solar masses. Mm -hmm. It's a special type of accretion disk. Mm -hmm. They are required, you want. They're, it's only complicated when you have multiple objects uh, mm -hmm. circulating mm -hmm. out. But, but neutron stars are not such a fancy thing than, than a black hole, so it's, it's people uh, like to prefer the interpretation of a black hole. But why, why do people assume that they have knowledge about such extreme states of matter, okay? Because you, you have to consider the, the um, equation of state of a neutron stars and maybe some maximum density or something like that. Why are people so convinced of their model if, if there is no independent evidence that, um, that something exists or does not exist? In those days, uh, this was very challenging to do new experiments. Uh, young, talented observers mm -hmm. wanted to try their abilities in finding such things. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, interesting question to be answered, and you got money for it. Mm -hmm. You got paid. Mm -hmm. So this way you earned your money by mm -hmm. trying to find black holes. Mm -hmm. So lots and lots of people because it's try to find black holes. It's sure. always more exciting to find something than to, to sure. just prove its, sure. its existence. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, That's a, a, unfortunately I think a widespread phenomenon in, in, in physics. Yeah. Okay. That is already in the Littleton uh, yeah, yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said that this was one of the reasons why yeah. certain yeah, yeah. fancy ideas can survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then came the supermassive ones. Actually, mm -hmm. historically, the supermassive black holes were already earlier in Donald Lindenbell's mind, mm -hmm. who for a couple of years argued with uh, Martin Rees mm -hmm. in Cambridge. They had joined seminars. I but from a theoretical point of view, right? Uh, again, Lindenbell's argument was that the centers of galaxies are heavy, a lot of matter falls mm -hmm. into them. Mm -hmm. How see. should so much matter end regularly yeah. in the I center see. of a heavy? That's something that okay, people so still it's think today. It's a semi theoretical argument, maybe. I mean, the solid, what is considered the, today the solid evidence for the for the so-called supermassive black holes would be the radio astronomy observations by, I think, the, the, the Gaussian Institutes, the observations ah. by, by Gensel and the, the S1 and S2 uh, orbiting around, well, around nothing. They would do just the opposite of what we observe. We observe that matter, since the beginning of the universe, always falls towards the centers of galaxies but then it's re-ejected at least at the same rate, even a bit faster re-ejected than falling in mm -hmm. through the Conan Sofra found m dot in equal to m dot out mm -hmm. as much falls in as out that needs this rejection needs a powerful engine mm -hmm. black holes couldn't do that they would do the opposite they would mess mm -hmm. it up mm -hmm. they swallow everything mm -hmm. So, so you observe something going on in the centers of galaxies, right? There you, is something. You gave a talk on that, on, the, on this. Actually, our Max Planck directors in Munich, they don't see anything. They say, we look there and we don't see such a star. Yeah. Because they don't know that there's also absorption. And mm -hmm. that at the centers of galaxies, this absorption mm -hmm. is dances of hundreds of solar uh, sizes, uh, nuclear ashes from nuclear burning, mm -hmm. hiding these sources. Mm -hmm. So when we look at such a star, the whole night, for a tenth of a second we see an infrared burst. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. or an X-ray burst. Mm -hmm. And they say, we see nothing. Mm -hmm. ha! To see such a burst mm -hmm. through a dense hiding mm -hmm. plate on them. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't, haven't thought about this. Mm -hmm. So the brightest sources in the universe are invisible for our telescopes now. Mm -hmm. We don't see them, but they have to be there. Such a star, the center of our galaxy, it is one of these objects which is not a supermassive black hole, mm -hmm. but a burning disk. Mm -hmm. That was, you asked me when did I get there, I got there in 1978 when Humitaka Sato invited me to Kyoto. Mm -hmm. Humitaka Sato was famous mm -hmm. Japanese mm -hmm. who had done some astrophysical thing. Mm -hmm. Every taxi driver knew him. He invited me to uh, Kyoto in Japan mm -hmm. and together with his PhD student, mm -hmm. Kentai uh, Hara, um, we looked at our galactic center. Mm -hmm. uh, nice guy and we discussed hardly and during this discussion it became clear we need a very strong engine that re-ejects this enormous amount of matter which cycles in to be re-ejected you mm -hmm. see it in through the broad line region stars lose their atmospheres by, by the strong wind that blows at them it goes through the narrow line region such a star again blowing winds strongly mm -hmm. and then it goes through galactic chimneys seen later in x-rays in radio and it goes through the fermi bubbles seen at x-rays mm -hmm. and cosmic rays and they go even out through the galaxies out through our galaxy mm -hmm. we see the f f <coughs> um, hydrogen in the one case and mm -hmm. metal ions in the other case which wavelength is that observation um, Observation is either radio mm -hmm. and, uh, and also either radio or X-rays mm -hmm. by the metal ions. And these clumps, mm -hmm. they come from filaments which have been ejected from the core of our galaxy all the way out to the edge mm -hmm. throughout 10 to the 9, 10 to 10 years mm -hmm. and are still receding and moving faster than the local speed of sound mm -hmm. out of our galaxy. Mm -hmm. And it's not only seen for our galaxy, but also for neighboring galaxies. Mm -hmm. And nowadays in the messenger, you see it even for a million neighboring galaxies. Mm -hmm. Before it was a slow initial sky service of 15,000. They all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Matter spirals in through the accretion disk. Mm -hmm. It gets denser, denser, denser until it gets density of water, gets warmed, get hotted, mm -hmm. starts burning, starts nuclear burning, mm -hmm. like Fukushima, mm -hmm. and then re-ejects all this infalling mm -hmm. matter mm -hmm. all the way through this giant galaxy to the outer edge and still visible. Mm -hmm. So we need, in the centers of all massive gas, we need a tremendously efficient engines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in those so days, I call them... What, what precisely is the observation here? In the center of our galaxy, you all you, you, you see that that burning disk, or, or is it hidden? Or our galaxy, we had already the first nice observations at the end of the 70s, uh, 80s, IAU conference. They measured multi frequency observations of the galactic center mm -hmm. and they saw a redshifted part going away from us, a blue shift is going towards us, and atmospheres of stars being blown away. I had published this in many of my publications, and mm -hmm. observers mm -hmm. had seen it, had published it, and did different things. Mm -hmm. Very interesting observation. We see in the broadline region, in the narrowline region, now in my 300th publication, I have published the central observations, mm -hmm. and you can see in these observations how matter travels straight line from the galactic center to the outer edge being post accelerated for some time by something that pushes them mm -hmm. and that in my mind is this nuclear burning disks it's the, the accretion disk that starts burning mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Rather than black hole, I thought burning disk. Uh, mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. change the H to mm -hmm. the D, and then everything is fine. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. 
Peter Schreyer was a great friend of mine on, on this idea. So he came to Bad Honnef mm -hmm. at an international conference. Mm -hmm. we, he co-chaired this meeting. Mm -hmm. And he says, Wolfgang, I come from Cambridge. I must defend the black holes. But you may attack them. So we friendly coexist. Mm -hmm. And we did. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, four years later, he died. Mm -hmm. Great loss for me, yeah, it's, it's, Peter Schreyer. It's, it's interesting because, I mean, um, that's what often happens in history. You have an open debate between two alternatives, maybe, and, and uh, maybe you're not of the same opinion, but you, you do respect each other, and this is debatable or not. And then, it, a couple of years later, it seems that uh, the field is cleaned up, and, and you're, once you, you come up with some doubts, it's, it's considered as something outlandish, right? Or, so, this idea of a burning disk did not really take mm -hmm. belief, it takes speed. Mm -hmm. uh, it, mm -hmm. it, okay, so even though people do not accept it, but it's something... Conferences some at Baltimore, Gene Eilek mm -hmm. was very mm -hmm. helpful, and mm -hmm. in other places, but mm -hmm. always only a few individuals, um, mm -hmm. friends of mine who understood mm -hmm. the idea, but uh, in the public, um, in the literature, the burning discs had not been formally introduced, they never mm -hmm. made this. Mm -hmm. But nowadays it is so clear, these yeah. observations, they yeah, may yeah. have been made by our best observers. Yeah, but, but I mean, there is one, one thing that, that uh, mm -hmm. seems like a burning disk, right? That what has been, uh, what has been claimed to be the first picture, so-called picture of a black hole in M87, the, the galaxy. People were saying that this is, uh, uh, this is the picture of a black hole, but actually what you see, I mean, another story is how this picture is decomposed and from the very beginning of data, that, that's a separate story, how to, but at, at the very end, even what you so to speak a see black is a disk, hole right? is black, we cannot see a black hole. So, so then these people said, but no, when a black hole decreases in metaphor in and gets accelerated and radiates, yes, but it radiates into the black hole, not to us. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to see an accreting black hole, mm -hmm. we need matter that gets, that falls into this black hole, but then is disturbed by something coming from the side and uh, reflecting a tiny bit of that mm -hmm. into our direction. It's never a bright source. Mm -hmm. So at a distance of 55 megaparsec M87 from us, we would be impossible to see anything. A black, we cannot see a black hole, we cannot see its shadow, all this is nonsense. Mm -hmm. What we can see is a nuclear reactor mm -hmm. that emits PEV, part, the hardest particles, which are crowded into this tiny direction towards us. Mm -hmm. uh, the direction does not, uh, these pho photons have a finite extent mm -hmm. and they have to be emitted into a tiny direction, 55 mm -hmm. megahertz. Law of energy conservation shows it's mm -hmm. never possible for radio photons. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the hardest photons existing, which then degrade and eventually enter our telescopes as radio photons and are visible by mm -hmm. this nice experiment. Admit it, these mm -hmm. eight telescopes on Earth seeing mm -hmm. this. No, it's these admirable people, technology. They, they, that's, oh, the telescopes and so on. But uh, uh, wonderful observation. Lot, I think there is a lot to be said about but the processing data processing and, and the kind and, and, and first of all also the, the introduction of models. I mean the, the model dependent interpretation of mm. this data which is leading us to the picture. Yeah? It's not uh, a pure approach that you, you take something with a camera and, and you, you develop it, right? So, but this is another story. <coughs> yeah, um, you had uh, uh, well, apart from, I mean, you're giving an alternative explanation, right, of the, of the supermassive um, black hole hypothesis at the center of the galaxies, but, I mean, um, to, you didn't even have to present the alternative. I mean, it's also, uh, if you have reasonable doubts, I think it's, it's, it's okay to discuss that. You, you uh, smiled a little bit before when I mentioned the the orbits of S1 or S2, is S2. there any inconsistency in these observations? Or? Frank Eisenhower from Munich gave a talk when he had seen the first 
passing of star S2 around such a star. Mm -hmm. He was here at Bonn and on a day when Klaus Hasselmann, my great friend from Hamburg, was just here with two mm -hmm. of them, and he spoke of a precession by the three degrees. Mm -hmm. So there, there was a precession of, uh, which was not explained by, by conventional theory. I had calculated it and it fitted, I published, all this is in print, you can read mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's consistent. Mm -hmm. It means that the central source is extended. Mm -hmm. So much extended that the Kepler orbit is distorted. Mm -hmm. It's not a point source. Mm -hmm. So it's, black hole would be too small, it had to be extended to do mm -hmm. this. I had expected this and Frank Eisenhower had measured it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, as was in Munich then wanted to talk about it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that was okay, the so early story. Even if you, I mean, uh, it's legitimate if people might be skeptical of, of your <laughs> hypothesis, but on the other hand, there are serious inconsistencies with what is considered the, what is the established interpretation. It's still right? a mess. The data are still a mess about the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because it's, it's not vacuum there, mm -hmm. there's, there's plasma. Mm -hmm. The plasma tilts the orbits. Mm -hmm. Fata Morgana at infrared. Mm -hmm. Something not well known to the... So it's difficult. The centers to see it directly is difficult. Mm -hmm. And mainly because, also because of the absorption, because mm -hmm. these huge ejected masses, they also absorb. Mm -hmm. So we see little and this little is distorted. Mm -hmm. It's a complicated story. Mm -hmm. for years to come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, one, one general thing I want to uh, address is if you're talking about uh, the theoretical aspects of, of, um, of general relativity and black hole physics. By the way, I think it's interesting, I don't remember, but there is an astrophysics textbook and there is one chapter, um, Black Holes, and it's all about theory and general relativity and solutions of Schwarzschild and Kerr solutions and then there is another chapter astrophysical black holes <laughs> which is which is all about observations but you see what I mean there is it, it's almost a separate world and um, uh, if, you, if you read Wikipedia you find something like that it's a pre Diction of general relativity that black holes exist. Would, would you agree on that? Not at all. Again, Roger Penrose, the PhD father of Stephen Hawking, he noticed quite soon that naked singularities mm -hmm. would be the general expected case. Mm -hmm. Enough calculation had been made that gravitation mm -hmm. collapse mm -hmm. leads to singular situations, not to regular ones. Mm -hmm. Only a black hole would be regular in the outside world, mm -hmm. everything else would be singular. Mm -hmm. And what they found was a black hole is of measure zero in the mm -hmm. class of all naked singularities. Mm -hmm. So if you know a hundred singular collapses, mm -hmm. does not contain a black hole. Mm -hmm. If you know 10,000, does not contain. If you know billions, mm -hmm. it's not. It's zero. The probability to get in that black hole is zero. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in order to avoid this property, mm -hmm. this problem, mm -hmm. Roger Penrose made this definition black holes are yeah. not wanted. Yeah. Yes, they are certainly desired. But I think people, I mean, people talk about uh, uh, Einstein's field equations and Schwarzschild's uh, solution to it. And then in the 60s, the Kerr solution of a rotating black hole was theoretically developed. So, uh, and these are remarkable theoretical developments. Yes. With Schwarzschild and Kerr solution and so on. Hard work, but difficult. It's, not, it's, mm -hmm. it's nevertheless not a real object, you know what I mean? So people kind of mistake, uh, I think this is called uh, uh, um, Whitehead's fallacy or, or um, fallacy of misplaced concreteness, they mistake theoretical objects for something real. Yeah? And because you can't just have the evidence for a Schwarzschild solution, right? You have, you have evidence of, of perihelion shift and you have gravitational redshift and you have light deflection known since 1919 and you have the Shapiro uh, time delay, but, but you have all these beautiful tests, but you don't 
You don't see something like a Schwarzschild solution. There is now a group of young theorists in the world who think that the ultimate field equations should not allow for singularities mm -hmm. because they describe measurements. Mm -hmm. And our measurements never get something singular. Mm -hmm. Our measurements get something finite, otherwise mm -hmm. it's not a physical mirror. Mm -hmm. So good theories are free of singularities, so mm -hmm. theories must not yeah. be admitted. And mm -hmm. we notice now we don't need them. Mm -hmm. We don't need them because our neutron stars stay regular. Mm -hmm. we, our measurements on mm -hmm. pulses by Michael Kramer will ever stay regular mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. finite and interesting. Yeah, yeah. And every theory mm -hmm. has a, a limited realm where you can apply it, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is no theory with infinite an infinite uh, range right. of applications and we know, I mean, if you know nothing, we know that it all breaks down at the quantum level, right? So, I mean, I, I think there is one thing that physicists do not like, their own ignorance, if they are, must admit that we just don't know. So, what is your experience um, about the, the people involved or, or uh, I mean, you're one of the very few people who can oversee the history of this. Uh, of this stuff. Um, 1967 was an important turning point and uh, uh, this, this 69 was Donald Lindenbell's yeah. supermassive ones and 71 was the mm -hmm. formal definition of yeah. black holes by John A. Wheeler yeah. jointly with the Cambridge yeah, yeah, group. Wheeler was advocating very much. Uh, John was A. Very, very influential. Yeah. He and right. Remo Ruffini, they in the United States they did a lot of publication work Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, so, so one might say there was a deep desire to, to develop this concept and, and to eventually prove it, right? Stephen Hawking wanted initially to do his PhD with Jordan in Hamburg, uh -huh. so he visited us, visited me, mm -hmm. uh, was a few centimeters taller than me, mm -hmm. tall student, mm -hmm. climbing the buildings at Cambridge, still healthy and sound. Mm -hmm before his disease two years later made mm. him quite a car. So I knew him from the beginning and um, his uh, idea that uh, black holes could be objects of to be introduced into relativity actually <coughs> came from, I learned it from his PhD professor mm. Penrose, Roger Penrose, mm -hmm. who is almost exactly my age, mm -hmm. still alive. Mm -hmm. Great mathematician, mm -hmm. great physicist, but mainly mathematician. And when Roger told me one day that his student Stephen had told him that some bodies may act like black holes. Mm -hmm. So uh, he wasn't sure. He says, I'm not a physicist, I'm a mathematician, I cannot judge. But uh, okay, we said, let's, let's see. They didn't want Hawking's entropy term mm -hmm. to be criticized and attacked. Mm -hmm. which, is, which is poor theory, by the way. I mean, if you have a decay, a decay time scale, I, I think of 10 to the 66 years, I mean, whoever on earth should, should think about me measuring this. His, what he called entropy of black hole, mm -hmm. was the entropy of a totally evaporated black hole. Mm -hmm. So that at the edge of our galaxy, mm -hmm. a solar mass black hole formed, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't see a thing of it, mm -hmm. but the entropy of the whole galaxy would go by a big factor. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, something we never observe uh, uh, has uh, quantitative to such an inference. So his, his quantum black holes, um, they were strongly attacked by people in France as one mm -hmm. guy who published a whole book about mm -hmm. errors and wrong interpretations of black hole. Mm -hmm. so, we should leave the quantum black hole. Uh, well, they had different classes, the ordinary black holes, the low mass and the tiny mass. It was a year when in Geneva they were afraid that the nuclear reactor and its energy was raised mm. and yeah, the whole I city was, would, I wasn't afraid, yeah. would be that. <laughs> it was published in Nature. Mm -hmm. I got invited to a lunch mm -hmm. place here on halfway to but <coughs> Uh, down the Ardenau Road, and uh, he says, I have a family, I feel responsible for what happens. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. these mini black holes and the entropy, they 
all this really disappeared when I gave the other reasons that um, a theory should be regular, that um, um, the centers of galaxies could contain burning disks, which mm -hmm. are regular objects. There was no space anymore left for black holes, none detected, none proposed, only many groups still published, uh, uh, by financed by funds mm -hmm. given for this work. Mm -hmm. So if these groups mm -hmm. had been released from their funds, um, mm -hmm. the whole thing, it was then high time to drop the whole cell. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course now, uh, in, in young years when I was in Bonn, uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was surrounded by friends, Professor Wolf Priester was my personal friend and everybody, and nowadays I'm a bit uh, the opposite because uh, mm -hmm. they are paid by black hole funds. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they do so fantastic observations, uh, I don't object to that. It's only the interpretation. The interpretation has to go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, should. Yeah. They there, do there these so new observations. Yeah. Um, there, is so much, there is so much theory-loading <coughs> interpretation today. Even yeah. my friend Harald Lesch, he, I know mm. from early, he mm. was in one of my conferences. When he, this morning, when he had to talk about uh, uh, this uh, Event Horizon Telescope, observation of M87, mm -hmm. uh, it was too fast for him, he had no time to think mm -hmm. what he mm -hmm. said, and uh, I could have jumped him, I wrote him letters afterwards, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. kept quiet. He's a good man, mm -hmm. Harald Lesch, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. on that day, mm -hmm. that day was too fast, mm -hmm. and uh, just then you sit it in just front of the camera mm -hmm. and have to say something. Mm -hmm. He should have said, give me a week to think about, to yeah. think about. Yeah. But then, when millions of people have told you, uh, yeah. talking this way about mm -hmm. black holes, mm -hmm. then how to remove this mm -hmm. statement the next mm -hmm. week? Yeah. yeah. In early years, mm -hmm. when we had our hikes every year mm -hmm. for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. surrounding words, yeah. and we got things clear. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's interesting <coughs> that? Um, mm -hmm. There is no precise date for the discovery of a black hole. You have pulsars, and you can uh, relate it precisely to the date in which Choiseling Bell discovered it. Or you have the binary pulsar, and you, you go to Hulse and Taylor and say, that was the yeah. date. Okay. I yeah. said, wow, there is something strange going on. But at black holes, you don't have this. So... Uh, no, they don't exist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, they cannot. This is, uh, the, the, here's the thing. I think this is this is from from a methodological point of view. Right. It's an interesting hint that something is wrong with the concept, because if it's established over years or uh, over decades, even, yeah, what does that mean? That that means that uh, people are not really comfortable, and there are a lot, there's a lot of skepticism. But you don't have any better, so sooner or later you're going to accept it, right? And and um, but this is, I mean, uh, the, the problem is that that if something uh, something wrong, a wrong concept, you, you convince it's a wrong concept. Once it is accepted, okay, so the entire scientific community has an incentive to confirm this this concept, right? And there are funding and project and everybody wants everybody wanted to see the black holes right w wasn't that your experience or? and the shadow of a black hole whatever it is yeah i've never yeah, learned that yeah no i mean but but uh, i mean this is devastating for, for science we live in a difficult era when so many different groups over the globe are working on similar problems mm -hmm. and uh, we cannot really f trace all the ideas, new ideas, uh, discovered by different groups. Mm -hmm. When I started, there were a few people in the world. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Paul Dirac in England, Wolfgang Pauli in mm -hmm. Switzerland, Richard yeah, Feynman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, but these were really people, Dirac, really interested people in finding out something. They were not ambitious in the strict sense. 
right? I mean, they were just deeply curious about nature, but not ambitious in the sense that they wanted relate to their name a given concept or I'm the discovery of a black hole. No, that didn't interest them, right? Mm. So, so what's, what's your opinion about that, um, about the fact that, I mean, a young student, uh, however talented he might be, uh, uh, if he enters science or astrophysics today and uh, if he says, I want to scrutinize black holes, I mean, he would not be allowed to make a career, right? So, what, what's your oh. opinion about... Oh no, uh, unfortunately he would. He would be allowed. No, I mean, yeah, but if you, if you doubt seriously, I mean, w with your opinion about black oh, holes, yeah. you would not make another career, right? <laughs> Sorry, a young one who wants to shoot them down, yeah, yeah. That, that would be it now. That must be an established person who says he's at the end of his career, yeah. like me. I, uh, yeah. I cannot lose anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah th that's another interesting Too fact. Too close because, to heaven. Because, I mean, you find the <coughs> the very reflective <coughs> voices and, and the very <coughs> doubtful voices and the skeptics, they're all, <coughs> all, almost older people now, now in science. I think this, this is also a bad sign, not because I dislike all the people, I like them, but I mean, uh, the young ones should be also the skeptic, but uh, we, we live in a period in which the reflective voices are, they have completed their careers, they don't risk anything, but if you enter, you're supposed to go with the herd, right? As Thomas Gold said. So maybe we should, uh, it's a good idea to conclude with a quote of Thomas Gold. Oh, and please. This is, this is in one of your books. I have four books of yours here. This is in German, Physical Moose to be checked. And this is your book about astrophysics and new approach. And this is with Peter Scheuer. Chats from stars in galactic nuclei, yeah. and this is understanding physics, ambitious title, but I really like uh, this and um, the gold effect, a sociological effect. Quote that a mere unqualified belief can occasionally be converted into a generally accepted scientific theory through the screening action of refereed literature of meetings organized by scientific organizing committees and through the distribution of funds controlled by club opinions. That's the way it works and unfortunately, Wolfgang, I think that's, that's what happened with black holes. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the best cases.